anybody want to go back 100 years from now and watch this? Um, <clears throat> I've been teaching at the college for uh, a lot of years. I think this is my 34th year. It's hard to believe. I am like an old timer. When I came to JCC, um, I was 25. I was younger than the vast majority of students in my classes, which was weird. So a little bit about myself. <clears throat> I uh, was, was born and raised in Iowa, where I still have a couple of relatives. My brother and sister are there. I went to school, had a small uh, four-year college um, called Loris College in Dubuque. Dubuque is right where Iowa Wisconsin and Illinois all meet. It's called the Tri-State Area, right on the Mississippi River. And uh, I got my bachelor's degree in biology, and then I transferred to Iowa State University, um, where I was in the zoology department for a couple of years. And then from there, I, I took the job at JCC. So this is the only job I've ever known, which is very unusual for a lot of people in today's world, right? go through two, three, four occupations. So um, I've been teaching here again on the Cattaraugus County campus, although I have taught on the Jamestown campus on occasion uh, as well. I teach A&P one, uh, I've taught A&P two, I teach micro, I've, I've taught almost all of the courses I think in the listings it seems, uh, zoology, human bio, health science, animal behavior, um, I teach a tropical biology course every other year with one of my colleagues in Jamestown, Jan Bowman. Some of you may know Jan. Uh, we were supposed to be going to Costa Rica in about two months, but of course that got scrapped because of COVID. So um, we've kind of rescheduled that trip for the spring of 2021 or 2022 with the hopes that by then things will be better, but you know, who knows? But uh, that's a fun course. Um, I like to hunt, I like to fish, I like to hike. I like all outdoors, outdoorsy things. Um, I've gotten into photography the last few years. So that's been kind of fun. I have five beehives, so I'm a beekeeper, um, which is a very interesting hobby. Um, my wife, Wendy, works on the Jamestown campus in the Career uh, Center, Counseling Center slash Career Center. Uh, we have two daughters. Kelly is our oldest. She's married, lives in Hamburg. Um, she and her husband have a small two-year-old. She works for HSBC Bank. Uh, she went to Fredonia for her undergrad and then went to uh, um, St. Bonaventure for her MBA. My youngest, our youngest daughter, Leah, actually uh, lives about two miles from Kelly in Hamburg, which is really interesting. Uh, she went to JCC, got her OTA degree, Occupational Therapy Assistant degree, and then transferred to Gannon University. We have an articulation agreement with Gannon whereby our OTA students can transfer. And uh, after three years at Gannon graduates uh, with a uh, health studies bachelor's degree and a master's in occupational therapy. So she graduated last May um, in, in the midst of COVID, very worried about getting a job, but was fortunate enough to, to get a, a position with a company up in Orchard Park. And um, what she does is she travels around Erie County, Cat County, Chautauqua County, and works with little kids, preschoolers, um, elementary age kids. She has a few families some, from some Amish families near us. Uh, I live in Randolph. And so uh, it's trial by fire, you know, right out of school, trying to figure out how this all works. And uh, to top that off, she does the, the telemedicine stuff through the computer, like we're doing Zoom with, I don't know how she does it, but with kids and, and parents with kids and such. So um, she's, um, Going to get married in a couple of years. She's engaged. So that's just a little bit about me. Um, 
so what I was saying earlier was I had um, posted, I think, uh, a Zoom recording that kind of went over the um, syllabus a little bit. Have you had a chance to look at that at all? We weren't allowed to access that. It said that the video couldn't be played when you pressed in the link. Oh, um, are you referring to the first part of chapter one? Oh, maybe, yeah. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> yeah, Carol had uh, sent me an email earlier today that she had the same issue. It said like private or something like that, yeah. <clears throat> so I went in today as soon as I read her email and uh, I think I fixed that. So hopefully now you ought to be able to get in, Hannah. I hope, uh, you know, maybe while we're talking here, why don't, wasn't somebody try to go in and see if you can it's open still, up? It still doesn't let me get in. It still doesn't let you get in. No. Well, that is the weirdest thing. Of course, there's been some strange things going on with Zoom here. I, um, would somebody just try it now for the fun of it and see if, if you're having trouble? Go into the lecture course shell, and then there should be a folder that says like Zoom lectures. I just tried it, and it still says it's private. Huh. Mine's saying it's unavailable. OK. Very strange. Do you guys see the course shell that I'm pulling up here? Yeah, OK. I just checked it like a half hour ago. Oh, that's that is so weird. It was fine. Huh. All right. Well, I'll work on that. But anyway, um, this is the first part of chapter one. This is sort of the, the Zoom lecture, as it indicates. Um, so you ought to definitely be looking at that in the next few days, assuming I can get it up and running for you. And then I will work on part two of two and have that up here by the end of this week. I'm probably gonna work on that tomorrow, I would think, or Thursday at the latest, and I'll have that posted there. Okay. Uh, I apologize for that. I, I have no idea what's going on. I've, I've posted tons of videos over the last, you know, almost year, last spring and last fall, I've never run into this problem at all, but but I will certainly see what I can come up with. I, I don't know what's happening there. But um, I guess maybe we should take a few moments and talk about the syllabus. Um, I don't have to go over every single word here. And I guess before I do that, I had promised Juliana that I would give her, let's see, you were gonna talk about this in the, in the afternoon lab, right? And you already yeah yeah I was going to pop in for the next one okay well since I was in the morning right but you you posted something in the chat too didn't you just earlier yeah so I posted it in the chat and then we got kicked off I posted it again um, so in AMP one and AMP two um, being that they were both virtual or at least AMP one was half virtual um, we did like a Facebook group and a group chat. And it was really helpful to just keep everyone organized and everyone like on the same page of what was going on and even just like to vent sometimes about the stress of everything online. Um, but so I posted a group. Um, I've already started a group chat for lab and lecture. So I know some people aren't taking both of them. So I figure we won't bombard each other with things that might not pertain. Um, but if you want to add the group and then I can add you into the whichever group chat would work for like lecture hypothetically for here. But um, yeah, if you just wanna add the Facebook group and then we post stuff and whatnot, just to try to keep everyone on track. Yeah, great. Thank you for doing that. So take advantage of that. For sure. If you're interested. Um, I think I had, I had sent uh, you an email about trying to look at the syllabus before we met and uh, you know we would take time now to answer any questions you might have regarding kind of what we're gonna be doing for the next 16, 15, 16 weeks. Um, you had no trouble downloading the syllabus, right? Okay. 
So I'll just mention here that um, you know we're we're meeting obviously uh, via Zoom on Tuesdays from 1:15 to 2:30. Um, but I do have office hours throughout the week. Um, I will be on campus in Olean on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So, you know, you can certainly stop by um, my office, room 220, on the second floor of the Allied Health and Science Center if you want to do that. Um, or you can you can email me and make an appointment so I can block off some time if, when you come in. Uh, and then the other option, of course, would be sort of Zoom office hours. So I have a big chunk of Monday open if you would like to get together one-on-one -on -one, uh, in the Zoom room to talk about anything. Um, I would simply ask that you make that appointment through Starfish. There's a place where you can sign up. And I will um, make a note to myself here to double check my office hours uh, in Starfish. And so as soon as you make an appointment, then I get an email indicating, you know, that. So that, that's kind of nice to have that, that instant um, appointment and I can see what's going on. I'm not going to sit around in, at, my, at my computer from 10 until 2.30, hopefully waiting for you to pop in my Zoom room. I just think that's an inefficient use of my time and your time. So um, I would just ask that you maybe make an appointment that way. Or you could, I guess, email me too. That's fine. Um, the textbook we're using is a new edition of Talaro's Foundations in Microbiology. It looks like this. If you have the 10th edition, that's fine. You can still use it. It's not a whole lot different from, from this edition, from what I can tell. Some of the figures are a little changed, but the, the information pretty much is the same. I, I would say even the ninth edition you probably could use. Um, but you do want to try to get this as soon as you can, because we're obviously in the chapter one this week. Um, we're going to be trying something new this semester in terms of how the tests are going to be administered. We're going to make use of something called Respondus Lockdown Browser and Respondus Monitor. Is anyone here familiar with that? Anybody? I'm looking around, I see no thumbs up. I kind of checked it out after I downloaded it the other day. Uh -huh. Okay. It doesn't seem too bad. Well, I will simply tell you from the get-go that I have not used it before. I'm going to be piloting it for the first time. Um, so there may be some hiccups along the way, and you're just going to sort of bear with me as best you can. Um, we're we're going to try to make this work. Um, basically, what this does is it provides a level playing field when it comes to taking the exams and the quizzes. In essence, what happens is you will download this um, Respondus Lockdown Browser. And again, there's information that I provided on in the course uh, shell. It basically prevents you from using any other browser during the exam. In addition to that, it also monitors you via the video camera built into your laptop or if you have a separate video cam like I do on the top of my screen. Um, so I would encourage you at some point, if you have not yet done so, to go into the course shell and then look over on the left-hand side and it has, I think, three files here that talk more about it. If there's a place to download the, the lockdown browser. And then there's some information with regard to rules and expectations. And then this is simply a privacy overview, overview so that you understand that your name is not going to be given out to anybody. You're not going to get spammed back. You're not going to be put on a mailing list. It's 
kind of legalese, if you will. But I did want you to know a little bit about the privacy, data privacy. So in essence, kind of what happens, and, and this I've not actually had a class take this yet. Um, when you're done taking the test, of course, I will, I will grade it. So I, I put the test together in Blackboard, and then I administer the exam or the quiz through this lockdown browser. And I'll correct the quiz, correct the exam like I normally do. But what I will have is a video of you taking that exam. And I will just tell you right off the bat, not only do I have a video, but I have, I have audio too, I can listen. I am not gonna sit there like a hawk and watch every single minute of every single student taking every single exam. So I don't want you to think that I, number one, have the time to do that, nor do I feel the need to be overly, um, what, concerned. However, there are systems built into this respondents blocker thing, whereby if you leave the room or you look over to the side for an extended period of time, it will prompt me to watch that video. So again, I would just simply ask that you read through these rules and expectations. We, I will talk more about it as time goes on. Um, I just wanted to kind of give you a heads up about it. Um, and the other thing that I was going to say is if you go to content at the very bottom, there's a practice quiz so that both you and I kind of get used to how this is going to work. It's, it's ungraded. It's just simple questions that you can answer after you've read over the syllabus and you've looked over those three documents that I mentioned earlier, you know, up in, in this uh, file. So this, this quiz is open for you to take as many times as you want and just view it as a dry run because that's how I'm viewing this. How is it going to work? It's going to prompt you to show your ID. It's going to prompt you to take the camera and look around the room so that I know you don't have other books and people waiting in the wings to give you the answers. Uh, I know it sounds like Big Brother and it sort of is, but um, just go through the practice quiz, see how it works. And um, the key here though, is you have to download this lockdown browser, and that will then take you into the quiz. You do not want to go into the exam without first going to the lockdown browser that you've downloaded. Okay, that is something that some students I hear forget about doing. They get, in, get into, the, into the quiz right away or the exam, and, it, and it's not working, and they freak out. Well, it's because they didn't download the browser first, which will then automatically take you to the quiz or the exam. And then it's just follow the directions. Let me just open it up for questions. Not sure I'll be able to answer all of them, but do you have a, a basic sense of what it, what it involves? When you say to show the ID, like what ID do you want us to show? Cause like, I don't go to JCC, I go to St. Bonaventure. So like, would my like Bonaventure ID be okay to show? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So anybody else from, from Bonas? I usually get a few students every semester. Okay. Well, welcome, Hannah. Um, yeah. I think what they tell you to do is show your student ID or your driver's license. Um, you know, you can just about imagine if this was a course whereby you could be in London or Singapore or Rio de Janeiro taking this test, right? How would I know, you know, you're not a paid proctor or a paid person, and this happens, right? If this is a medical school exam or some big important exam, you know, these things happen. So that's why they ask you to show the ID thing. Now, some of you, obviously I know, but uh, some of you I don't. Um, other comments, questions? I know I'm kind of springing this on, on you without a heck of a lot of directions, but um, just download that information 
that I posted on the left-hand side of the homepage there, the course shelf. And go in and take the quiz. See how it works. You can take the quiz multiple times, and then I can kind of see how, how you did. Not so much in terms of score, but just how did the system work? Yeah. The quiz says that it has like a maximum of like 30 minutes. It shouldn't take that long, right? No. No, no. It's going to take you 10. Okay. Yeah, and you don't have to study for it, which is great. Don't you love quizzes you don't have to study for? Um, yeah, it's it's sort of like you guys have all taken tests on from Blackboard, haven't you? You know, so you're given like a 60 minute time or an, a 90 minute time or whatever it is. So yeah, you're going to be told how much time you have for the quiz or the exam. So it's not really that much different in terms of the overall appearance of the quiz or the exam. It's just that we're going through this lockdown browser and monitor system. So because it's not actually through Blackboard, we won't get like a preliminary score, right? For like any of them? No, you won't get them for any of them, Juliana, because if I ask an essay or a short answer, you know, I've got to take time to correct that and then and then put the put the score into the grade center. So unlike a multiple choice or a true false where I could have the system correct it, as soon as you push submit, you could go to grade center and find your scores. You know, that's not going to happen with this course because they're not all uh, system graded. I'm going to have to read some stuff. Is, okay. is, that, is that what you were asking about? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I do know that when you do go into the respondus, it takes you straight to Blackboard itself. Then you log in with your Blackboard ID and password, and it takes you to the same Blackboard front page, and you go into the class. So it's essentially still through Blackboard. Yes, that's right. You just have to make sure that you download the browser first, and that, that lets you enter into the whole system, if you will. Yeah, that's, that's the key. Yeah. And I've given you the information on uh, you know, the link to get the browser and download it and so forth. And there's a short little video that you should watch. Okay, so again, not to beat a dead horse, but just make sure you go to this left-hand side and you check these out. Okay. Everybody good? Any other questions about that? Okay. As I said, there may be some hiccups along the way. Um, I will do my best to make it as stress-free as I can for you. Um, but uh, I want to try that. Okay, so back to the syllabus then. Um, I've given you some information about that, obviously here too. As far as the grade goes, we've got four exams, each worth 90 points. Uh, and you can read over the format. We've got quite a few short little quizzes scattered throughout the semester. Um, we will talk about when those will be available for you to take in terms of times and dates and all that stuff as we get closer. But I think the first lecture quiz is next week. So that's why I want you to get into that practice quiz by the end of this week. Okay, so that next week, we won't maybe have any major problems in terms of how the system works. You're gonna be more comfortable with how it works. I'm gonna make sure you know that it works. I'm gonna make sure that it works. <laughs> All right, so uh, I would just ask you, please, in the next couple of days, try to get in and take that practice test. Um, in addition to the quizzes and the exams, I've got a 20 point instructor evaluation, which uh, is rather subjective. Um, you know, I'm looking at your, your attendance. I'm looking at your engagement in the course. Are you asking questions? Are you sleeping in the background? Do you never show me your camera? Uh, I'm not trying to pressure you to show me your camera every Tuesday, but um, it's kind of nice to see people. Um, and so there's the total number of points for the course, 420. At the end of the semester, I basically add up all of your points, see where you fall. That corresponds to a percentage and a corresponding grade. If you want to monitor your progress throughout the course, all you got to do is add up your points, divide by the total possible, That'll give you a percentage 
and you can determine the grade. So, or ask me if you if you lost track of your points. I will put uh, extra credit points on quizzes and exams. So if you're wondering about extra credit, there will be some extra credit points. Um, and then you can kind of read over this stuff, Blackboard use, student expectation. You see this in all of your syllabi probably. Um, I pretty much take the quizzes and the exams from the uh, PowerPoint slides that I will be, you know, providing Zoom lectures on. Um, once in a while, I might not have time to lecture on a particular topic, and I might ask you to be responsible for a specific section of a chapter. Um, so uh, just be aware of that. Um, but but if you're following the PowerPoints and the uh, lecture presentations, the Zoom lectures, um, and keeping up, you should be fine. We do cover quite a few chapters in the course, so we're moving along at a pretty decent clip. You've been through a and one and two, so you're all pros at this. Um, the Learning Commons consists of our Learning Center, the library, uh, and the um, and the Disability Accessibility Services Office. So you can read over this. Um, I did email Beth Lisi, who is our director of the Learning Center, asking her about um, tutors in the Learning Center. And she indicated to me that um, we do have a tutor. Her name is Kyra, Kyra Nolder is her name. And she will apparently be on campus probably on Wednesdays. So she's had micro with me. And so I just wanted to you know, bring to your attention the fact that, that Kyra will be on campus. So you could make an appointment to actually meet with her. Um, the um, Learning Center is in the LLAC building where the library is located. Um, or she probably will have even Zoom um, appointments that she could coordinate with you as well. Um, Beth also says there's a Jamestown tutor, Caitlin uh, Goronsky, who can also tutor micro. So I know some of you are Jamestown folks, so you can check um, uh, who's the coordinator of the Learning Center there, uh, Janelle Gray, I think. So there are a couple tutors. Uh, and she says here, students can schedule tutoring appointments in Starfish beginning the second week of classes. And they, you can choose to work with them on campus or uh, remotely. Yeah, so, so if you're at all interested, um, check that out. Um, I don't use Starfish a whole, whole lot. Um, some of you are familiar with this, others of you are not. But they talk a little bit about it here. Um, I think it's most useful for me in terms of appointments when students want to get together with me to go through Starfish, like I said earlier. Um, this JCC alert allows you to be uh, instantly notified if there's a campus closure due to weather, for example. Um, and I know a lot of you have already signed up for this, but I wanted to let uh, any of you guys who aren't familiar with it know. Um, so Hannah, you probably don't have that, but if you want to check it out, you can. It's, uh, it's a nice, nice way of just knowing instantly that there's no class or whatever. Um, then again, maybe you're not even coming to campus. So unfortunately, I was talking to my sister in Iowa last night and they had a big snowstorm. And I was chatting with her daughter uh, and I said, gee, Haley, it's too, too bad we don't have snow days anymore, right? When you had it, the, the school was closed, you could spend the day playing outside or whatever. And now you got to have this darn Zoom stuff. Even though the school is closed, you got to still have class. What a bummer. But uh, it's still nice to know if uh, something's going on that, you know, might prevent you from coming in. Um, 
couple other important notes. You can read that over. Um, in terms of the course itself, um, if you've had me for a &P, you probably recognize this because it's the same bullets that I put in the a &P lecture. So micro is no different than a &P in terms of, I would say, difficulty. It's, it's a totally different topic, but you remember how much time a and one and two took. And for some of you, it was a lot of time. And, and it, it just, it is what it is. It's not an easy sequence of courses. Um, I don't think you should view micro as any more difficult than a and one or two. Uh, it's not hard, but you got to keep up with the readings and so forth. Um, you don't want to be caught behind, get behind, because we move through at a fairly decent clip. And because we're only meeting via Zoom once a week, as opposed to face-to-face -face twice a week, I think that, that makes it even more challenging, doesn't it? I think, I think if I were you, I would find that to be the case. Um, so just don't be afraid to ask questions. Try to keep up with the readings. Try to keep up with the PowerPoint, um, Zoom recordings. Um, and don't be afraid to ask questions. And Juliana has kind of already done this to some extent with the Facebook page. But I think having virtual study groups can be a super great and fun way and, and, and a supportive way. You, you can commiserate with each other about, oh, Raderman, he's just a pain in the butt. You know, that quiz was unbelievable. Uh, hopefully it won't be that bad. Um, but, you know, I often wonder what you guys talk about behind my back. I don't know. Um, it's just always good, I think, to know that you're not, you're not there alone. You know, we're all working together. We're all going to help each other out. We're going to get through it. You've made it through the fall and last spring, and it wasn't easy but you've, you've done well, you've survived under very difficult conditions. And so hopefully, uh, you know, next fall, we're gonna see classes back face to face and things are gonna get back to normal a little bit. But in the interim, we just have to be flexible with one another and um, not to say it's gonna be any easier, it's gonna be probably more challenging, but um, we will get through it. So I'm just going to I'm going to pause here before I go into the lecture schedule and ask are there questions comments on any of that. And I'll try to kind of check out the chat as time goes on too it's hard to talk and read at the same time. Any comments questions concerns worries anxieties um, one question. So how you put up um, on the Blackboard, like the Zoom lectures and recordings, like the part one of two that you just put up. Um, so is that like different from the lectures that we're going to be having on Zoom? Like, do we need to like do both of those? Or is it just like a review of like what's going on on Zoom? Okay, good question. Um, we can do a couple of different things here. <clears throat> We can use our Zoom meetings on Tuesdays from 1.15 to 2.30 to talk about the latest and greatest stuff we covered in lecture. In other words, open this up as a more free-flowing question and answer discussion time. That's one option. I kind of like that option myself, but you can tell me if you prefer to have me do a more formal lecture during this time? Or would you prefer that I do that separate from this time and post that, we'll call it the Zoom lectures up like I did for, for the first part of chapter one and I'll finish that up for chapter one later this week. Um, I, I just kind of, I want to make the most beneficial and efficient use of our time because you know, an hour and 15 minutes goes really fast. I mean, here it is after two o'clock already, right? So I'm fearful that if we opt for option two, which is for me to lecture during that hour and 15 minutes, that it's not gonna leave any time for clarification or questions or, or going over stuff, you know what I mean? 
So I was going to propose to you that we use this time, as I said earlier, for just kind of open-ended discussion, questions. What do you want to review? What's, what's causing you problems? And then, then I can go into the PowerPoint and I can review slides 10 through 15 or whatever the case may be. But then your job will be to have watched those Zoom lectures, right, before Tuesday, so that when we come, you've got some questions written down that you want to ask about. I, I just think that that might be a good thing to at least try at first. Jocelyn's shaking her head a little bit. I'm not trying to convince you, but maybe I am trying to convince you that we that we kind of try that. But that does mean again that you are going to be responsible for watching the Zoom lectures that I will have done in you know in the preceding week, basically. I'm just reading the chat here. Okay, so Melissa, are you agreeing or disagreeing with my proposal? The first one? That we use this yeah. as a chance to discuss? Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Agree. Okay. Yeah, that's right, Tiffany. I think you're right. You know, it allows you to go at your own pace. You can pause, stop, re you know, rewind, play, and so forth, which is harder to do when we're if I'm lecturing like, like this. Now I can of course, and would tape our Tuesday meetings all the time so that you can go back and review that anytime you wanted to do that. Okay, so um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just operate on the assumption that we'll, we're gonna try this and we'll see how it goes. I'll record all the lectures. And basically what I'll be doing is I'll be, I'll be going into the PowerPoints. And so you know that you have those um, standalone PowerPoints already here in the course shell, right? So in this folder are all of the PowerPoints for the entire course. Now, some of these I've, I've hidden from view. I can post all of these if you want. Right now, what you're gonna see if you go in will be um, just the first two chapters. But I was thinking I would just free those up like a week in advance for you. Um, but in essence, those, those lectures that I'm going to be giving you, that I've started to give you, if the darn folder would open up, um, what I do is I just click on the PowerPoint, and then I, uh, I basically record it. This is just loading here. So there's chapter one. And I basically go through and I narrate the PowerPoint. So if you want a non or unnarrated version, if you will, and then you've got to go to that folder and find that. Okay, it's in the chapter PowerPoint. Here's the recordings that we will get up and running for you. Okay. Um, any, any more questions on syllabus stuff. I'll talk about the lecture schedule next. For um, grading wise, I remember, I think it was AMP one, we needed a 75 to pass. Is that the same or is it just a C? Well, um, are you asking that in, in relation to what nursing wants? No. Um, oh, okay. Is it, is it just a C to pass? Well, because like, I, I was looking at your reading, it said a 70 to I think a 79 is, a, well, a 70 to 75 was a C, 75 to 79 is a C plus. I know for nursing, you have to have a 75 in everything. So I don't know if that's what you're talking about. No, no, no. Yeah, I know that part. But it's different for like everything else, I think. I just remember someone saying like they barely passed A and P with a seventy-five, and I was thinking I thought you just needed a C. Well, it's possible, Ashley, and I don't know that this is the case, but it's possible that the instructor might have had a slightly different 
percent range for a given grade. Okay. Because believe it or not, and this is going to seem kind of weird to you as a student, I can manipulate these percentages however I want. Mm -hmm. I could say anything below a 90% is an F. <laughs> I would never do that, obviously. And that would be unethical and immoral to do. But there is a little bit of wiggle room that um, some instructors will have. But I would say what you're seeing here is pretty much the standard. A C is considered anything above 70%. But in some courses, you know, maybe it's a little different. Um, in my mind, um, if you were to transfer microbiology to a, another school, I don't know if they would accept anything less than a C as a transfer. I think that you could get a D at JCC and it would, and those four or those three credit hours for the course would go toward the 60 you would need for graduation. Okay. okay. So anything above an F is considered passing. But as you know, when you go to calculate the GPA, a D is going to hurt you more than a, than a C or a B or an A will, just from a statistical mathematical point of view. Um, I'm in the nursing program right now. I just, it was something that I remember someone saying, and I was like, wait a second, I thought it was just a C. So, and then I looked at your grading system. I was like, well, that's, it's still a 70 is still a C. So I wasn't sure if it yeah. was just someone had taken a different with someone else or something. It's possible. Um, if you have, if you have a 70 or above, you're going to have a C or above. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Professor Ratterman, I had a question about that software. Um, I have an eight month old and she's kind of noisy sometimes and it's hard to get childcare for every exam and quiz. Mm -hmm. Will the um, software shut off the test if she's like screaming or <laughs> like talking too much? <laughs> no, 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 it won't. So don't worry about that. Yeah, no, it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna, you know, it'll, it'll probably flag noise or something, but yeah, don't, don't worry about that. Other questions, comments? Um, I noticed uh, somewhere in the syllabus, it said something about um, reports being with exercises. How often will we have those? I'm not sure what you're referring to. I'd have to find it. Um, no, but basically not, just how you're often not, will we You're not like, mixing up lecture and lab, are you? I could be. Because in lab, we have lab reports that I ask you to turn in every week. OK. You have, you have lab this afternoon? Yes. OK, so we'll talk about that. All right. If, if Melissa, that's what you were asking about, which I suspect maybe I think so. Is, because for lecture, there's nothing you're turning in to me okay. to be graded other than the quizzes and the exam. OK. Yeah. yeah, it's probably. I just know somewhere when I was reading, it was there was a thing about reports. So that's probably it. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Um, I have a question. Yeah. So um, looking at the the quiz schedule, so are they like advanced? Like, that's what they call them, call them an AMP and JC like at Jamestown. Like, so there's a quiz next Thursday. So is that on the chapter three stuff? Um, the quiz next week. And let me ask you real quick, how many of you are taking lab at the same time you're taking lecture? Or maybe I should ask how many are not taking lab? I know the Jamestown folks aren't. Okay. All right. Um, so the quiz next week would be over chapter one. And then we should decide now how much of chapter three would be on that quiz. So in other words, when we get together on Tuesdays and there's a quiz that next week, 
remind me if I forget to talk about how much or you know into what chapter how far do I have to go to study for the quiz you know that week now we'll be meeting on Tuesday of next week I know but I, I want to give you enough heads up um, for that so so certainly all of chapter one and I would say a, a fairly decent chunk of chapter three. Um, and I can, we can decide that now, or I can email you next week, early next week, how far or how much of chapter three will be on that quiz. Maybe I'll just plan to email you. How's that? About the quizzes, is there like a certain like time and day that they're always going to be like due to be done? Yes, let me just finish my note. Um, yeah, we'll have to decide. I know I've got, um, I've got Wednesday the 4th listed just because we're in like a Tuesday, Thursday sort of schedule, sort of. Um, so I was sort of anticipating that we would do the quizzes and the exams on Thursdays. Now, you, some of you may be working, others of you might have other things going on at 1.15 to 2.30. I can't assume that you have that block free. I don't know if that's a safe assumption to make, but um, I'll need to think about, you know, what block of time on Thursdays I'm gonna have the quiz open for you to take or the exam open for you to take. But I would propose that we do it on Thursdays. Does that cause a problem for anybody? And Sarah says she works until two. And then who was it was telling me that they work until five? Was it you, Stephanie? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, so a lot of you have different things going on. So I think probably what I'll end up doing is I'll, um, I'll choose a couple different time blocks on Thursday to accommodate everybody's schedule. Does that work? Yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out. We'll figure out the time blocks. Um, I'll give some thought to that and we'll talk about that next Tuesday. How's that? We don't actually have lecture on Thursdays, correct? No. Okay, I didn't think so. Yeah. No, we don't. We, we're only meeting Tuesdays from 1.15 to 2.30. So obviously- That honestly feels kind of trippy. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Well, it is. Um, in the sense of what? What do you What do you mean? I, I don't know. Um, I, I guess I guess I'm just used to having like two days of lecture. I don't know. It just it messes me up a bit. No, yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I hear exactly what you're saying. It's almost like um, there's not enough time. You wish there was more time to meet. Yeah. And, and I think that gets back to the idea that if we use this time as efficiently as we can, that'll be helpful for everybody. Yeah. Other questions? Okay, I'm going to go back to the syllabus and um, go to the lecture schedule. So this takes us through the first three quarters or so of the semester. And again, you can see we're covering a chapter on average a week or one and a half chapters a week in some weeks. Um, We do have 
a Tuesday that we don't have class because of President's Day. So there won't actually be any Zooming at all that week. Um, which is not to say, I'll just throw this out and I, I don't, I don't want to promise anything, but if some of you guys feel like I really would like to have an additional time to meet, you know, we can always do one-on-one -on -one or um, get together at another time. You know, if, I'll, if several people say, I'd like to meet on the 16th, even though we have it off, you know, I'll, I can become available for you there too, even though it's a, technically a day off for us. Um, I don't want you to feel like you're stranded or anything like that. So we've got the exam dates. These are, again, all Thursdays. With the fourth exam there um, during, I think it's finals week. I don't, I would not call this a final because it's not cumulative. So uh, if you're wondering, like, you know, this, this second lecture exam on the 11th, do I need to worry about anything in chapter one? The answer is no, we've already been quizzed on that. So the quiz material and the lecture material don't build. It's just over the preceding quiz or preceding exam. Okay. Um, and so back to this idea of a fourth exam, I didn't call it a final because the final sort of implies cumulative and it's not cumulative. It's just going to cover basically um, probably chapters 14 and 15. Now you might say, oh, great, two chapters. Well, guess what? These are like the hardest chapters of the book. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just saying this fits perfectly with, with the world we live in today, and that's COVID-19, right? That's what this gets at. That's why people are trying to get vaccines right now, so they can build up active immunity against the virus if they get it. So this is really cool stuff. You guys are going to be learning material that everybody should know a little bit about, because that would have, dis that would have um, made the discussions that have been going on in this country for the last two or three or plus months much more understandable. I think people are so freaked out and afraid because they don't understand basic biology. And there's so many, there's so much out there that is not factual. Um, we're going to be learning about what this mRNA virus or a vaccine is that that both co that both Pfizer and Moderna are using. There's some really great applications to this course via COVID-19 that we're going to talk about. So it's going to be fun. But that that basically is the lecture schedule. So with the quizzes, like what we get tested on in the quizzes that won't be on the exam. So like chapter one and three, like for the first quiz, won't be on exam one. No, no, oh. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. Exam one's going to cover one, three, four, five, and maybe some of six, or maybe not. We'll, we'll see. I do not like to test you over material that you just heard about or reviewed two days prior. I don't think that's enough turnaround time. So my sense will be, and we'll see how it goes that we'll put the virus chapter on the second exam, probably. We'll talk about that as we get closer. But no, um, you know, even though you've been quizzed on chapter one in, in quiz one, or you've been quizzed over chapter four in quiz four, three, you still got to go back and re review that for the first test. Yeah. The quizzes are designed to force you to keep up and to learn the material so that when you get to the exam, it's not going to be quite as overwhelming. You know, if, if you told me I don't want any lecture quizzes, I would be the first to pay you because it's extra work to write all those darn quizzes. But what students tell me is they want those quizzes because it forces them to study the material. But can you imagine taking a, a, a class, and maybe you have, where there's just exams and there's no quizzes? And so when you hit the exam, that's it. You better know it. And you have no idea kind of what the expectation is of the instructor before you take that exam. I don't know. I, I can see both sides of that coin in some respects. But I think I would probably opt for the quizzes because it's going to, again, force me to keep up. And I'm going to hopefully begin to learn how to, how to learn the stuff by studying for the quizzes.
So um, I will work on that, that Zoom lecture. I don't know why it's not loading. I will try to find out. In the interim, start getting into chapter one and um, actually into chapter three by the end of this week. If you're wondering why isn't chapter two listed, that's because chapter two is the chemistry chapter, which is important, um, but I am not gonna quiz you over chemistry stuff. You've already had that in a and or maybe you've taken college chem or allied health chemistry, some of you. Um, I, I, I hope you'll all agree that having a little bit of chemistry background is really a good thing for biology and for a and and micro. I, I, I don't think you can argue that point. You might say, I don't like chemistry and I can't argue that, you know, it's not easy. It's very, it's very conceptual. It's very uh, abstract because it's hard to see a molecule, <laughs> but to understand biology, you really do have to have an appreciation and basic knowledge of chemistry. So if you would like to, you know, you know, uh, scan through chapter two, by all means do so. It's not gonna hurt at all, but um, I won't be testing you on that. So get into the book, start reading the text. If something's not making sense, make a note in the side margin of your notebook, ask about, right? Um, and uh, I'll see a lot of you guys in lab on Tuesdays, but not everybody, unfortunately. Okay, any questions about anything before we end this? I will be hopefully uploading this and um, posting it in the course shell. Um, continue to read your emails because uh, I may send out important information once in a while and I'm assuming you're reading your email. All right. Well, you guys have a good rest of today and um, we'll see you next Tuesday. And I'll see some of you at 2.40, I guess, right? For a lab. Yep, so see you in about 10 minutes. Okay, bye. Thank you. Sure.